Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to Midday Live. Coming up this afternoon, Preston gives hint more centers uh, to help Ghana see daily infection rates. And 17 new cases recorded in Wuhan City in China. We have all these stories plus a lot more uh, coming up over the next hour, including the very latest in sports, business and entertainment. Let's start now. The ban on public gatherings in Ghana has been extended until 31st of May 2020. President Kufuado, who announced this in an address to the nation, encouraged Ghanaians to continue to adhere to safety protocols to curb the spread of coronavirus. We certainly must be doing something right in Ghana. Our country has administered more tests per million people than any other country in Africa. And in fact, the World Health Organization, WHO, has reached out to us to share our sample pooling experience with other African countries so they can adopt this strategy and also ramp up their testing capabilities. It is thus vital that we continue to maintain the measures of enhanced hygiene and social distancing protocols to contain the spread of the virus, as they are the surest way to a quick return to a life of normalcy. All stakeholder bodies I have interacted with over the last three weeks in the health, labor, religious, chieftaincy, educational, hospitality, tourism and creative arts sectors share in this opinion because collectively we believe they are essential for our very survival. These groups are also being engaged on the way forward towards the easing of these restrictions so that our social and economic lives can go back to normal whilst protecting lives at the same time. Soon those engagements will enable us to design a clear roadmap for the easing of restrictions. In my address to workers and the nation on May Day, I announced the extension of the closure of our borders for one more month as the means to continue halting the importation of the virus into our country. The ban on public gatherings, as set out in Executive Instrument No. 64, has been extended also to the end of the month, i.e. 31st May. So during this period, there will continue to be a ban on public gatherings such as the holding of conferences, workshops, parties, nightclubs, drinking spots, beaches, festivals, political rallies, religious activities and sporting events. All educational facilities, private and public, continue to remain closed. There's still a ban on funerals other than private burials conducted with not more than 25 persons. It is noteworthy that the police are arresting and prosecuting persons irrespective of their status in society who flout these regulations. We can allow a few persons for their narrow selfish interests to jeopardize the health, well-being and safety of the larger population. Right, so uh, religious uh, gatherings, according to the president, will still remain suspended, at least for now. This follows the president's address extending the ban on social gathering until May 31. Before the address, however, Christian leaders presented modalities and guidelines to mitigate the spread of coronavirus, paving way for a lifting of the ban on religious programs. The intervention strategy spearheaded by the Christian uh, ecumenical uh, bodies include one, uh, make available hand washing materials for all to wash hands before entering the church or touching rails and doors, etc. Sanitization, that's make sanitizers available 
preferably a dispenser available uh, near church entrances, washrooms, extra passes, offices, vestries, among others, to sanitize hands and then social distancing also. So let's quickly get on to uh, Zoom right now. We have the uh, chairman of the Christian Council of Ghana, Reverend Dr. Uh, Cyril Fayose, uh, joining us for uh, some uh, conversation on this. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much uh, for your time. The president talks about not allowing uh, people with their selfish interest to draw us back, you know, with the infections, etc. But I know that the church groups have presented very detailed plan or uh, outline of how you are going to help prevent the spread of coronavirus if uh, the ban on uh, churches are lifted, but it hasn't been lifted. Are you disappointed? Yes, I'm here. Mm. So I'm asking you whether you are disappointed that at yesterday's national uh, broadcast, the president did not lift the ban on social gathering, including churches. Right, I think we're having uh, some challenges uh, getting a good communication with Reverend Dr. Uh, Cyril Faisal, but we'll be uh, getting to him and re-establishing contact so we can have that conversation. This is still Midday Live from our studios at, at the Sawe Kandai in Accra. If you're watching us, we're streaming live on Facebook, on our Facebook page, and also at 3news.com. Uh, you can also catch us on DSTV channel 279. Let's see if uh, Reverend Dr. Cyril Faisal uh, is here to uh, speak with us, unfortunately. Uh, Doc, can you hear me? I can hear you now. I Great. You so we apologize. We lost you earlier. I was saying that the person did not lift the ban on uh, social gatherings, including churches. And this actually is in contrast with the suggestion and outline that church groups have made, you know, to convince everyone that you are prepared to curb the spread of coronavirus. I was asking if you are disappointed with that. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, uh, not in the least. We are not disappointed at all because we were not asking for the lifting of the ban. Mm -hmm. What our um, guidelines uh, meant to do is to prepare our members and educate them on how to operate. What should the ban be lifted? But we were not in any way asking for the ban to be lifted. The decision to lift the ban is entirely that of the government. We believe that they have the technical wherewithal, they have the. Mm, but, but my concern is that if you were not uh, uh, advocating for a lifting of the ban, the guidelines you brought out were actually uh, clear guidelines in the event that. Uh, bans were lifted. How would you come up with such guidelines if you are telling me, on the other hand, that you were not anticipating the ban to be lifted? No, not at all. We did not know whether it would be lifted or not, and that wasn't our expectation. In any case, the government consulted the church leaders, and so the decision that had been reached is in tune with what the church leaders mm. may have whispered to the president. So this is not a surprise at all for us. Right. The ban should be lifted only when the time is right, when COVID-19 is under control. Uh, we can operate freely. But COVID-19 has changed the world. It has turned the world upside down. So no matter what happens, church will not be the same. We have to put in some measures so that we do not have uh, relapses. And uh, I know that irrespective of the fact that you are telling us you're not disappointed, there are comments coming from uh, individual members of the clergy that suggest that the lack of assembling of Christians and church members is having some form of effect on uh, Christendom, which I reckon shouldn't be the case. So I want to understand from your uh, expect position, what you think the church's position should be within this time that there is a restriction on their ability to congregate in fellowship? Well, first of all, COVID-19, as I have stated earlier, had uh, affected
Right, I think we're having uh, some uh, severe challenges with Reverend Dr. Cyril Fiosi, but uh, uh, we'll continue the conversation and get to the Ghana Medical Association uh, on some of the decisions made by the president. And uh, we have Titus, Dr. Titus Bale will be joining us uh, on the line uh, pretty shortly for us to have that conversation. This is Midday Live from our studios at Addis Sawe Kanda in Accra. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. Hello, good afternoon, sir. Right. Uh, wait. Yeah, hello, good afternoon. Thank yes, you for uh, having me. Good. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad uh, we, we have you on now. But I, I, I want to know from you, I know the Ghana Medical Association had issued clear guidelines and instructions, uh, in effect, asking government not to lift the ban on social gatherings and the rest. So I want to hear what your thoughts are on the president's general commentary and announcements yesterday. All right, thank you once again, and uh, good afternoon to uh, the viewers. Um, our position was what we put out in our statement, and to the effect that the president did not lift this ban, we are grateful, and that is what we sought to do, uh, because it is our expectation that we are not out of the woods, just uh, the minister, our minister of information also mentioned. And from the data that we have and the information we pick from the various health facilities, we think that lifting of the ban would have been inimical uh, to our progress. And so we are happy that the ban has not been lifted, and we are gra glad that the president has given further time. And we hope that during this period, a lot can be put in place before the lifting of the ban. Mm, I know that the president sought to uh, give a lot of assurances to citizens generally about the rates uh, of infection and the numbers, especially in the past couple of days, the numbers have been uh, pretty on the high side. Uh, coming from the Ghana Medical Association, I want to ask you whether, in your estimation, we have enough reason to be assured as the president wants us to. Uh, sorry, I lost you a bit, so I couldn't hear the earlier part of the question. Right, so I was saying that the president offered a lot of assurances uh, as to the numbers. I mean, the rising numbers, especially in a couple of, uh, in the past few days where there were up to about 900 new cases. I want to find out from you whether from your uh, position as the Ghana Medical Association, you think there are enough reasons for the citizens to be assured as the president wants us to. Uh, we don't have any reason to doubt any of the figures the president has put out uh, and the explanations for any of them. The only thing is that people should interpret these numbers in context and should not assume that uh, the assuring words by any ways mean that we are out of danger. And that is what we want to caution so that people should not go out jubilating to say that everything is smoothly under control. We are not out of the woods. There is community spread. There are asymptomatic people walking around who are spreading this virus. And that is a real danger to all of us that we think that people should be cautious of. But we don't have any cause to doubt any of the figures and the explanations put out by the president. Mm, so the Ghana Medical Association, uh, the equipment you need to work, I know that there were challenges with uh, personal protective equipment to your members in uh, frontline work. I want to find out whether the GMA is, as of today, satisfied with the equipment you get to enable your workers do the work they do. Right, uh, I think uh, we're having uh, some network connectivity uh, challenges there, but we're speaking to uh, Dr. Uh, Titus Bayo, who is the General Secretary of the Ghana Medical Association. This is still midday live from our studios at Addis Sawe Kanda in Accra. Right, uh, let's do some other stories. Some residents of uh, Akpariso, a suburb of Obwasi, have been demonstrating against a uh, proposed private facility to be used uh, as a holding center for COVID-19 patients. The COVID-19 health team in Obwasi is now in a fix as cases continue to grow with limited space. First, let's hear what residents are saying.
de ti asian ti asian ni se be bia omode ayarefo ni begu no ye nyina odo ye nkuta akuni nim krata ka se de but enam cheche kaka ya te ene ye brofu kaka enim se the word isolate means to ho ana se free ho en men ho na ye se e isolation center isolation center ene ebusi afie se wo e se wo could that be isolation center this is my simple question. Could this be an isolation center for us? It was this morning when when I saw that uh, there, there was a, a, a clear truck picking the person who is occupying the house from the house. So I inquired to know that uh, what was happening. And he told me that he has given the house to the uh, Ministry of Health to come and quarantine people in the, in the, room, in the house here. But, I became so worried because that place, that house has no anything which can prevent people from going out. And this is my house, it just opens it. And then it is going to be dangerous for me, my wife and my children to see those people here. The danger this facility or this property posed to us in this community is that the facility is in the center of the suburb. And so we do not want them to isolate or hold the patients here because if they hold them here, the thing that is posing it to us is that all the people in this suburb use this route. Yes. As you can see, you can just use your camera, check over here. You see there's a route from here, there's one from here, and there's other also from here. And so we all use this area. So the thing that is going to pose to us is that they're exposing the patients to us as people in the suburb. They're exposing them to us. And that is going to affect us as people. So we don't want them to hold the uh, patient over here. Right, uh, so William Evans Inkum is joining us uh, from the Ashanti region with some uh, similar developments there. Evans, how are you? What can you report? Well, I can report that um, because of the incessant agitation from these residents, now the Municipal Health Committee is thinking of backing down their earlier decision to um, convert this private facility into uh, a holding center. And that is quite worrying because we are talking about a, a, a district that is recording increasing number of cases. Um, uh, you, you see, comparative... Right, so we apologize uh, for the uh, challenges with uh, connectivity uh, this afternoon. But uh, some residents of uh, Kaporiso, a uh, suburb of Obwase, have been uh, demonstrating against a proposed private facility to be used uh, for a holding center for COVID 19 patients. The COVID 19 health team in Obwase is now in a fix as to cases, as the cases continue to grow. So, uh, Ms. Nkum, you were saying that uh, the, the Ghana Health Service has decided to back down. What I want to know is whether the health service has uh, indicated to us uh, what options or alternatives are available now that the residents have more like pushed for this to happen. Ms. Ankum, can you hear me? Yeah, so I'm asking, I'm asking if the Ghana Health Service has given us any idea of an alternative after the residents more like uh, scuttled this initial plan to use that uh, private facility for a holding center. Now, they would want to um, commit themselves again by letting the public know if they, they have cited a different uh, facility uh, aside the one which has generated some level of agitation because the stigma is very worrying, uh, especially places where COVID-19 cases have been recorded. Nobody wants to associate his or herself with any patient, and that is giving them some level of challenge. In
Right, uh, so we will we'll apologize extremely uh, for the network connectivity, uh, unfortunately. But uh, let's move away from there. Ghana has, as of uh, Sunday, 10th May, conducted a total of 160,501 tests for coronavirus. Out of the number, 4,700 have tested positive for COVID-19 with 22 deaths and uh, 494 recoveries. President Akufuado was addressing the nation on Sunday on measures by government to contain the virus. On Thursday, 7th May, 14,046 more tests were conducted, and this included the clearing of the last set of backlogs. Our total confirmed cases then rose to 4,012 positives, i.e. 921 new cases. Our recovery stood at 323, eight persons were critically ill, and death still at 18. It is important to stress that 533 out of the 921 new cases recorded between last Wednesday and Thursday are factory workers from a fish processing factory located in Tema. All 533 persons were infected by one person. Again, let me reiterate that these new 921 cases were from backlogs dating as far back as 26th April and not necessarily over a 24-hour window. The coming on stream of seven more testing facilities across the country to complement the efforts of the Noguchi Research Institute, the Kumasi Center for Collaborative Research, and the National Public Health Reference Laboratory at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital have meant that we have been able to clear all the backlog of tests and the reporting on the cases of infections since Friday 8th May is now current. On Friday, a total of 5,253 tests were conducted with 251 positives. On Saturday, 2,255 tests were conducted, with 266 found to be positive. For today, Sunday, a total of 3,045 tests have been done, with 160 testing positive. These relatively lower daily numbers of infections are welcome and reinforces the fact that the measures instituted to help reduce person-to-person -person contact and help defeat the pandemic are working. So as of today, Sunday, 10th May, the country has conducted a total of 160,501 tests, with our total number of infections standing at 4,700, with 494 recoveries, five persons being critically ill, and 4,179 persons responding to treatment. 22 persons, virtually all of them with underlying illnesses such as hypertension, diabetes, and chronic liver disease, have unhappily died. We must understand that the more people we test for the virus, the more persons we will discover and President Kufuado in his ninth address to the nation on steps taking to fight the coronavirus announced that uh, the coming on board of some seven more testing centers has helped in clearing the backlog, indicating that the reporting on the cases of infection since Friday is now current and in real time. The Ghana Association of Medical Laboratory Scientists in a statement earlier on Sunday asked government to, as a matter of urgency, begin mass testing and expand the testing capacity in order to stop the spread of coronavirus in Ghana. The, uh, the association maintained that the non-compliance to the prescribed precautionary measures such as social distancing and wearing of face masks must be strictly enforced. Uh, Dr. Ignatius Awimbono is president of the association. is joining us. I uh, should be joining us uh, pretty shortly.
He's on phone. Johnny is on phone now. Uh, Dr. Wimboni, uh, good afternoon. Thanks very much for your time. So uh, you want mass testing to uh, be rolled out. I mean, do you get the sense that from the levels of infrastructure we have in the system, this is feasible in the short term? It is feasible. Uh, and uh, thank you very much, uh, Susan, for uh, having me. And uh, good afternoon to I think it's feasible, and uh, as an association, we hold the position that the burden of COVID-19 within our Ghanaian population is far higher than what we are reporting. Uh, I don't want to believe that uh, 4,700 are just the numbers that we expect to be infected of COVID-19 in this country. But we are certainly limited in terms of resources and that's why the government is approaching this thing very cautiously uh, we're happy to have expanded some additional centers to around seven centers across the country but this does not largely cover a lot of the, uh, the Ghanaian space samples are still coming from um, uh, Lambuso down to uh, Tamale and KCCR for testing and I believe if we had the testing centers there at Lambusi, it was taking barely uh, one hour, two hours for somebody to get his results at that particular point. And these machines are available across the country. We have genius specs equipment across the country, and I think they should be explored so that we can capture a lot of the positive cases and then uh, be able to stem the uh, spread of the COVID. 19 virus mm. will be the population. I think if we test more, as the president says, we'll be able to uh, find out more of the infected person. But yes. if we fail to test, I'm afraid this COVID 19 virus will linger over us for a very long time. Mm. Thankfully, a lot of them are asymptomatic, and we want to thank God for this particular. Uh, all right, uh, Dr. Awin Bono speaks for the Ghana Association of Medical uh, Technologies uh, uh, Association. I'm Stephen Enti. This is still midday live from our studios at Adesawe Kanda in Accra. We have more news for you. Please stay. Welcome back. Now, the Western region has recorded its first COVID-19 death. The case is from Takwa in Shiaim municipality. The region's case count has today moved from 37 to 52. My colleague Eric Yaweje is in Takwa and is joining us live with details. To 52. Yesterday we recorded 14 new confirmed cases with one suspected case. Now if you look at the log that is given out by the Western Regional Health Directorate, Second Takrada Metropolitan Assembly is leading with 16 cases and this is followed by the Takwa Insuaya Municipality with 15 cases. Yesterday the 14 cases that we recorded, we are learning that 10 of them are coming from the Takwa Insayem Municipal Assembly. We are here in the Municipal Assembly and we have been joined by the Municipal Chief Executive, Honorable Gilbert Kenneth Asma, for him to tell us about these 10 new cases. Good afternoon and welcome to TV3 Live. Thank you very much. Sir. So tell us about these new 10 cases. Yeah, um, thank you for uh, correction. My name is Gilbert Kennedy Asma and not Kenneth. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, the new case is 10. Yes, it's true. And then we, we had 55 earlier. And then that, uh, the other case is about 400, um, you know, samples sent to uh, Sekendi Takrade. Uh, 10 of them, you know, are positive. So we have a total of 15, but um, two of them are coming from our boss. And our boss is part of Pristia Huni Valley. Uh, municipality um, we, we are we yesterday if you look at a release that came out purportedly coming from the Ghana manganese company they mentioned that the case, two of the cases are coming from their health facility so much so that one has passed on can you confirm this and what you know more about this yeah it's true uh, it's a 54 year uh, old nurse passed on but with um, um, you know some 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 symptoms of some some 
illness uh, aside the COVID-19. Yeah, that's true. Okay, what about the second case? Uh, the second case is a normal COVID-19 case, and the person is, is, is okay. The uh, condition is still uh, Have you been in contact with the company and you know of any measures that they've put in place? Yeah, I was with them yesterday. Uh, they've closed down the hospital. Yeah. Apart from that, what other measures do you know of? Where are the health, are the other health workers? And uh, that, that much I don't know, but um, I believe everybody is, they are not there uh, working at the moment, but then everybody's, you know, getting um, a place for, you know, these cases. But the, the places are very, very, um, the spaces are not many. You talk about G, G, GMC, uh, Anglo Gold, and then Goldfields. And then the municipal assembly has renovated uh, um, a six, you know, capacity bed facility for the Apinto Hospital. And then the municipal hospital has also um, a space. The gym has been converted to um, a, 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 a treatment centre. And that is a, a, we are going to partition it uh, to give us eight spaces or eight beds. Uh, Anglo God Ashanti. Uh, pay their promise are uh, also putting up a uh, structure they're putting measures in place to construct another facility for us but that will not be enough because look at the samples we sent it was 400 and even th there is another 400 that they are going to work on uh, from from today so you mean 800 samples have been taken from here sure. we are we are in terms of you know sampling we are we we we, we are leading uh, we are taking a lot of samples as as long as we can. We so can get people oh, oh. even yearning for their samples to be taken. Yeah. Oh, oh, these 800, where are they? Oh, they are, they, 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 they are around. Some of them are, have been, you know, put in some facilities. Unfortunately, uh, it is, it, 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 they are not big enough to contain all of them. Uh, some of them are even uh, mingling with us. And that is with you. sure. But is it because you don't have a place to put them? We don't have a place to, to, to keep them. So what we are doing is um, we, we sent um, schools, the schools that we have, public schools that we have here, to our ministry. So we are waiting for the for confirmation because all the hotels are denying us. Initially they said they will give their places to us. Unfortunately, when we contacted, her, especially when we had two cases, I contacted most of them, and everybody is telling you they have. Uh, people there, they have patrons there, so it will be very difficult for them to, you know, uh, be mixed up with, um, I mean, people who are suspected to have the case. Yeah. What, what about the churches? Because we know that now they are not working. Well, I haven't approached any church anyway, but uh, we, the, the instruction came that we should contact the hotels and then the, the schools. And the schools, we've visited some of the schools, but we are waiting um, approval from the Director General of Ghana Education Service. Okay. Um, the place that the Ghana Manganese is, um, is there any special sensitization program ongoing? Because once they've heard that we've recorded one death case, of course, they will be in a state of shock and all that. Uh, sure. Well, definitely, if, if, if you joke, they won't even let you enter. I was there yesterday evening. Yeah, from the Adam community. Uh, the community is part of, you know, they have their, their, their courtesies around and they have their, you know, senior bungalows and all that, senior officers bungalows and other stuff. It's not easy uh, penetrating there. They will, you will be subjected to a lot of questions and a, a lot of screening. That is what is happening at the moment. Honorable, the 800 samples you, you've taken for testing, the, the one death, then one on admission. Uh, is it to say that your measures, your, the protocol measures, people are not following or adhering to? Um, not that they are not adhering to. It's a, it's a, it's a mix of, of, of the scenarios. But um, you see, uh, we have three big mining companies. And as soon as one person is infected, I mean, we've got to know about it later. And the person might have made contact, you know, um, trying to hold handles of doors, opening and closing, even holding chairs and stuff. People might have also uh, 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 come into contact with such uh, items. So we, 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 we think, together with the mining companies, the, the committee, together with the mining companies, are making sure that everybody gets tested. 
yeah, to know our status. I think um, if we know our status, we can fight it better. It's not because our place, we have a lot of cases or something, but we think we have to. Everybody wants to be tested, even those at home want to be tested. Once the, the, the disease is airborne, Thank you very much. So you had uh, the Municipal Chief Executive for Takwa Isayem giving us an update with regards to the 10 confirmed cases and other measures they are putting in place to ensure that they are able to contain the spread. If you are in Takwa and beyond and you are watching me, COVID-19 is real. Ensure that you adhere to the safety protocols. Eric Yewege, TV3 News, Takwa Isayem. And I'm Stephen Ante. This is still Midday Live from our studios at Adesawe, Kanda and Accra. Up next is the business segment. Welcome back to the business segment. Now, President Akufuado reiterated government's commitment to supporting micro, small, and medium-scale enterprises. He gave details of the support uh, for commercial banks, uh, the support commercial banks are giving to help revitalize industries, especially in the pharmaceutical, hospitality, and manufacturing sectors. I chaired a three-day cabinet retreat at Pedriasi Lodge to examine in detail measures aimed at reviving and strengthening our economy. I'm happy to reiterate that government is putting in place a resilience and recovery plan with the overarching aim of finding more resources to strengthen the productive sectors of the economy to ensure sustained economic activity. We're rolling out a soft loan scheme of 600 million CDs in this month of May to support micro, small, and medium-scale businesses. And as you know, the commercial banks, with the support of the Bank of Ghana, have also instituted a 3 billion CD credit and stimulus package to help revitalize industries, especially in the pharmaceutical, hospitality, service, and manufacturing sectors. Union of Traders Association, Guta, is appealing to government as a matter of urgency to set up a committee made up of relevant stakeholders to discuss issues pertaining to the 600 million Ghana City stimulus package for medium scale and micro uh, enterprises and uh, come out with a workable stimulus package. Uh, it said in a statement that the stimulus package Right, uh, let's uh, quickly get to the studio now. I speak with Dr. Joseph Obing, who is uh, with the Guta. Uh, thanks very much for your time. Uh, president, as president of Guta, I mean, I know that your major concern is how your members are going to get access to this uh, support. So what are your suggestions? Because I, I heard the Guta raise concerns that this, is, uh, this amount uh, is not that significant until it's directed to the right appropriate quarter. So I want to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, thank you very much. Mm. First and foremost, um, let me thank uh, the president of this mm. country um, for his concerns about the trading community and the small scale industries. By bringing up this um, stimulus package, we do really appreciate. But what we wanted to draw the government attention is that so far, the communication to this effect is not being pinpointed mm. or directed to the intended target mm. as to um, the modalities, the thresholds, and even the interest rate and everything. Mm. None of these things have been done. And then the first time the government announced this package, he said it categorically clear that this fund is going to be um, through the trade associations in collaboration with the National Board um, for Small-Scale mm -hmm. Industries. And so if we are doing something in collaboration, it doesn't mean that one is doing something in isolation uh, than the other mm. party. And this um, we, we do not find, because we are expecting that a committee is formed, that we are part, and then we all... So, so your view is that this support must be 
effectively coordinated, coordinated in order for it to make the impact, impact. that is uh, yeah, the, that, the that, president seeks. That's all that mm. we are saying. And then, um, because um, the MBS, as I came out to give out the figure that um, they are expecting 200,000 people to source this fund. And Guta, the major stakeholder, has not even submitted its list. So we are asking how scientific is this mm. um, figure? How did they get, get to this figure? And that if you even divide the 200,000 with um, the 600 million Ghana cities, it comes to 3,000 um, uh, Ghana cities per business, mm. and which become uh, quite ridiculous when it comes to even the trading sector, because nobody will go for such a loan and all that. So we said that um, we have lumped all the SMEs together. We have the barbers, we have the, um, the hairdressers, we have um, seamstresses, we have maybe carpenters, shoemakers, and all that. These all form the small industries. Mm. And that if we pinpoint those um, ones and then a lot... But, but, but shouldn't Guta actually be the ones uh, making efforts to do the pinpointing you're talking about so that you isolate the particular groups you feel that will, will be more beneficial? Yeah, this we way. do it mm. together. Mm. Mm. Because we will not even pretend that we oversee the, small, the activities okay. of the small-scale industries. Okay. We oversee the activities of the trading community. And so we haven't submitted uh, this thing. And we do not ha we haven't even sat down to know that these are the areas. Government want to formalize the economy. Mm -hmm. So we are told. So they are taking advantage of this fund even to formalize the trading sector, who normally we right. do not even know the numbers and all that. Right. So that people should join associations and all that. And so once we are doing that, we have to collaborate with you. It's not that somebody should hijack the whole process and then neglect the others right. without uh, come out with information well, that will be confusing. Well, because, be for, for instance, mm -hmm. if you, you go and throw out a figure of 200,000 and people start ridiculing uh, what the yeah. good intention yeah. of government, that, hey, the 3,000, uh, what are we doing? Any but when we sit down and then we know the targeted people, the modalities that we are using, the thresholds and everything, then we are going somewhere. Then we are going somewhere. Thanks very much. Uh, Dr. Bing is the uh, president of Guta. This is still midday live from our studios at Adesawe Kanda in Accra. We'll be right back. Please stay. Sports here on Midday Live on TV3 to our first story. Now, Ghana centre half uh, Kasim Nuhu has waded into the discussion of whether football, particularly in Germany, should return or not. Now, the defender who plays for Fortuna Düsseldorf says if everything is planned well for the restart, he is ready to get in. I think that, um, yeah, one painful thing is, you know, um, football is always with fans, you know. So, yeah, playing close doors is going to affect some of us because we have been always playing under our amazing fans, you know. So, I would say it's going to be very, very tough for us because, um, yeah, playing with our fans is very difficult. For example, we, um, Fortuna, uh, because we are we are last back, last back three on the table, so it's, it's going to be very difficult for us because we need our fans to cheer us up and everything so that we can get motivation from them so that we can we can deliver for them. But in playing on, on, I would say, it's like we are playing on neutral grounds, I would say, because we have no fans and we have to play um, empty stadium. As a player, in this kind of state, going to play football, are you, are you okay? Are you, are, you, are you sound to go back to the field? Um, it's very difficult for each and every one because, um, yeah, um, but they, are, they have taken a lot of things into consideration. And I think, as we all know, even in the dressing room, we don't sit together. We, we sit in five in a very big room to dress up and everything. Let's go now to Spain, where La Liga president Javier Tebas hopes Spain's top flight will restart on the 12th of June and says coronavirus tests will mean uh, practically zero risk to players during games. Now, the league said on Sunday that five players had tested positive for the virus across Spain's top two divisions. La Liga started testing players last week as it plans to resume training and play matches behind closed doors. A number of clubs, including Barcelona, started individual training last week. Spain has been one of the worst-hit countries 
uh, in Europe with the coronavirus at 26,621 deaths and 224,390 infections as of the 10th of May. Well, let's head to tennis now, where Andy Murray has shared footage of a lockdown practice session gone wrong after he shanked the shot into his neighbor's garden. Now, Murray took to Instagram Sunday uh, to upload a video of him hitting a ball against a giant rebound board during a lights workout. The 32-year-old, uh, who has won Wimbledon twice, can be seen striking several crisp forehand and backhand shots against the board before getting one badly wrong. Well, that's all the sports this, this uh, afternoon here on Middle Live on TV3. International news is up next. Thanks very much, uh, Yao Fosulabi, for the latest in sports. To some international news now, uh, new coronavirus clusters have been reported in Wuhan City, where the virus first emerged. There are also new cases reported at the northeastern province of Jilin in China. Wuhan reported five new cases on Monday after confirming its first case since 3rd of April uh, on Sunday. And that's how we wrap up with the Midday Live. Thanks very much uh, for making time to be with us. On behalf of the crew here, good afternoon. There is uh, more news at 3news.com.